all of my photos are in the New England area. When I first started, I started out a landscape. And then I wanted to start doing people and uh, not coming from a big family. Uh, I didn't have a lot of subjects to say, sit down and mm -hmm. let me photograph you. Uh, I said, well, there's plenty of people out in the street. Mm -hmm. So I went out and started photographing people. And then having grown up, uh, let's say on the rougher side, uh, not with a silver spoon in my mouth. Uh, I was constantly being drawn to people who uh, did not have mm -hmm. uh, a, a good life or were continuing not to have a good life. And I started photographing these people and I started capturing moods. Uh, there were people that would cry when I took their photograph. Uh, and I said to myself, uh, they need a voice. Mm -hmm. I started photographing and photographing and not realizing uh, that something like this would happen. But when I would show my friends uh, the photos, they say, well, what did you photograph yesterday? Or what did you photograph last week? And I pull out my, if I had my camera with me or if I downloaded them to my phone, I would show them and they would kind of overwhelmingly say, you're not going to make any money. No, no one's going to buy these. Who's going to hang this on their living room wall? Interesting. And I looked at them and I said, probably nobody. Mm -hmm. I said, but uh, I see beauty in this. I see uh, something that a lot of people will just walk by. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just kept doing it and doing it. And... Uh, here we are. Some people get mad at me. And refuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's there's rejection. Okay. I don't want to say I'm immune mm -hmm. to rejection, but I have thick skin. Uh, so you'll offer, take a picture, and if they refuse, you move on? And Yeah. Yeah. Are most people receptive? On a particular day, it could be more receptive. Mm -hmm. And then on other days, it could be less receptive. Mm -hmm. I take whatever is in front of me. When I first started, I had an advantage. Uh, I had a motorcycle, ah. and I was easily distracted. Mm -hmm. And that worked out great, because I could, if I saw something, I could easily pull over. And Literally, when I first started, I would head out in a direction, let's say up north. I didn't care where I was going. I would say to my wife, I'll, I'll be back in a couple days. And I would just... What's down this road? What's down that road? Mm -hmm. What's down this road? And at the end of a few days, I would press go home on my Garmin. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, yeah. and I just kept doing that. I read a quote, another photographer, mm -hmm. and they said, I don't take photos. They capture me. That sums up my, my whole feeling mm -hmm. that every time I see something like this, it it captures me. And now you have an exhibit. It's not so much uh, about me having an exhibit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more, it, to me, it's more about the people. They, like I said, they, they have a voice. They have a lifestyle that they, uh, for many of them, they'll probably never get out of. And I, and I would see this, and I would see the despair, and I would see, you know, their, their lifestyle. And, uh, and, it, and it touched me. And uh, and here we are about to embark on a an exhibit showing this to help uh, Masters Mana. As one of the people in the photo said, every day I am invisible, every day people pass me by. But your picture of me seen on social media is called beautiful. I do not know what they see, but I know that my picture, your picture of me, reminds me that I have value. I remember the young lady. The first time I saw her, uh, she had a sign, and she had a, a large belly. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm pregnant. Can you help? And uh, I would pass her all the time. You know, as time went on, you know, one day I saw her, and, you know, this was after the summer had gone by. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next summer I, I went back out, and her, she had had a baby. Okay. And uh, we got on a first name basis. 
And I would always say to her, you know, when I walked by, I would say, someday, Pam, I got to take your photo. And she said, no. And I, if I happened to be in town again, I'd, I'd say, someday, Pam. She goes, no. One time when I went by, uh, she said, I've been thinking. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll come back tomorrow. Now, this is a street person. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll come back tomorrow. And I said, you look pretty. And I went back tomorrow, and uh, I see her kind of cleaned up mm -hmm. with earrings on. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was ready for her photo shoot. <laughs> oh, wow. And I said, Pam? And she goes, yeah. Today's the day. Today's the day. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It, it's been a remarkable journey mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, to touch uh, someone's life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think bringing them to others through social media, have people liking and sharing these photos, and then turning it into an exhibit, which we're excited for. All I can say is uh, it, it's amazing, and I and I think uh, I thank WPAA for the exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank them for their vision uh, of reaching out to what what I see. They they see the same thing that I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then bringing it to others. Yeah. So now we can come and see the work, being able to help Masters Mana. So oh. all the visitors coming with a non-perishable item, um, and and donating. I think that's going to be an, an incredible opportunity to give will, back. Will we solve the problem? No. But will we help the problem? Yes. Yeah. It'll make a pretty <laughs> big dent. So. If I had to jump back 20, 30 years ago and say, you know, someday when you're retired, uh, you're going to have a bunch of photos on display that are going to touch <laughs> people and help people. I'd probably go, yeah, right. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs>